I am Michelle Chalfant, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shelfont coming to you, gosh, on the first Thursday in September. Holy moly. The countdown is on. My son is leaving for Warwick over in Coventry, England on September 8th. There have been some tears over here. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard to let, let this child go, but he is bound and determined to get his master's degree. So off he goes over to England. He's definitely my international kid. I think he'll live there. He wants to live there much longer than just one year. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's what's happening in my life. My other son is away too. So I'm about to be an empty nester again. And the countdown has also begun for our move back to North Carolina. So that's really exciting. That's happening at the end of this month. And One more thing, I just remembered the adult chair coaching certification. The one week intensive is happening next week. Ah, kind of crazy. So it's a busy month here at the Shelfon household. You guys, I've got a lot to talk to you about today. Today I'm talking to you about how to heal and transform relationships. And I have to tell you, last week I did a podcast on how you raise kids from the adult chair. Like, how do you do that? How do you get your kids to live in their adult chair? How do you parent from the adult chair? All of that was happening on last week's show. And that's episode number 225. You can find that at theadultchair.com forward slash podcast. If you want to look that up or go to Apple or wherever that's all over the place. But anyway, that's 225 is the episode. If you want to learn how to raise kids from the adult chair or make, just make sure your kids are in their adult chair when they're adults, (laughs) because I will guarantee it, money back guarantee on that one. I talked to you all about that, but here's the thing. So today's episode was also kind of born from that last week's podcast, because I had a lot of parents that wrote in and said, what do you do if you've, how do I raise my kids from the adult chair? And I feel like I've screwed them up. And how do I heal that relationship? So today's show is kind of, is definitely for more like children that are now teenagers and then older. But I want you to know, I'm going to give you eight steps because you know, I love my steps, people. I love simple steps. I'm going to give you eight steps that you can apply into any relationship, whether you are single and have no children or not, you can take these eight steps and apply it with anybody. And it will help to heal and transform that relationship. It will repair a relationship that has been damaged. So it's, it's, I'm going to reference kids a lot, but you don't have to use it just with kids. Speaking of that, when we have a relationship in our lives that is not going well, or that has been damaged by who's, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. Oftentimes we spend a lot of times beating up on ourselves. We, our sense, our self-esteem is damaged. Our self-worth is damaged. So what I did was I created for you guys something called the self series. I'm very much a believer in building up the internal self in order to get the external to change. So if you want people and experiences outside of you to change, you've got to work on the inside. So I've created the self series. It's at theadultchair.com forward slash self. And it includes four modules. Number one, You're going to work on I matter because most of us feel like we don't matter. Many of us don't matter. Don't feel like we matter. I'm okay is number two. I am enough is number three. And I can, so many of us feel feel like we can't, is number four. So go check that out. It's an online, go at your own pace, four themed class. So it's again, theadultchair.com forward slash self. I think you will love it. 
is packed full of information and it will help you change on the inside and help with the exact thing that I think is such a root cause with so many of us, which is self-worth. So go and check that out and let us jump right into this week's show. We need to talk about this healing and transforming relationship. So we're going to jump right in right now. So here's a question I get too. What do we do if we really do feel like we damaged our kids? Because now they've got anxiety or they've got this or they've got that. And this actually happened with a client that I had. Marta was married to a man that traveled for work all the time. And Marta had depression. So when she had her first child, she was okay, but started getting more and more depressed. By the time she had her second child, she was really depressed. And her, her first child was around six when the second child was born. And by the time that baby was around a year old, her second child, she was in bed for a lot of the day with her depression. And her kids are now, um, I think around 20 and 14, actually. And she's, she came in because she was so upset about how she was with them when they were babies, when they were children, that she put so much on her older daughter. She had two girls on her older daughter and then her younger daughter, same problem. They both struggle with low level depression, but more anxiety and low self-confidence and low self-esteem. And she feels responsible. She says, it's all my fault. I've ruined these kids, don't know what to do. My husband traveled all the time. He was only home, mostly on the weekends. He traveled for his job. I was in bed so much of their childhood. And although I'm better now, they're 14 and 20. And especially my older daughter, she has so much anxiety. What am I supposed to do about this now? Is there any way to repair my children and my relationship with my children? And I said, of course there is. If they're still alive and breathing, absolutely. I have hope for everybody. If someone is willing to repair a relationship and put the time and effort in to repairing that relationship, I always have hope. Of course I have hope. And there are many, many things that we can do to heal and transform relationships with our kids or really with anybody. Okay. You can apply these steps to anybody. I have eight steps or tips for you to heal a relationship with someone else. Again, this is based on kids, but honest to God, you can do it with anybody. So number one, if you're in a relationship with somebody, and again, I'm, I was working with Marta on these steps and like her older daughter really wasn't talking to her all that much. And she was upset um, about that and really wanted to repair that, that relationship. What you want to do if you're in a relationship with someone like this that won't really talk to you, or it's really just a difficult relationship, you want to invite them into a meeting and you just invite them, hey, you know, you say, hey, is there a good time that we can sit down and have a conversation? And if they're far, far away, you can say it on the phone. Is there a good time that we can chat? I, I've used this on many shows, you guys, it's called the setup. So you're setting up the conversation. You're setting up the scene. You know, do you want to meet at Starbucks out in public or do you want to meet at my home? You want to do it on the phone, whatever you want to do, whatever's comfortable, then do that. But when you invite them into a meeting, you want to say something like, Hey, let's, let's connect around three o'clock. There's some things I'd love to share with you if that's okay. Great. And when you are meeting with your person, if you are in person, please remember do not get distracted by your phone. Put the phones away, turn them off, turn them on silent. If you're in a place like on the phone, don't do it when there's people in the background. Like really take seriously what you're doing. You are inviting this person into your space and you're being invited in their space and they're agreeing to have you connect with them in this way. We want to be respectful and kind and say, just thank you. Let's have this meeting and let's be respectful and show up as healthy adults. So that's number one. Number two, own your reality. I have talked about this so much. I did a whole podcast, at least one, if not more, on owning your reality. Take ownership and responsibility for and of your life, okay? So with Marta, I told her, I said, you know what? You got to own it. You just got to say, hey, girls, you know, so with her, I said, why don't you sit both girls down? And by the way, people ask me this question, you know, how old 
do my kids have to be in order for me to share some things with them, you know, heavier adult topics. In this case, 14 and 20 are fine. I might do it separately, but since they were two girls raised in the same household, I said, I think that it would be fine to do it at the same time. I wouldn't share this with an eight-year-old. They wouldn't, they don't quite understand it. 14 is on the fence, but certainly a 20 year old person, you can sit and share this with them. But in her case, I said, you can sit both of them down and let them know your reality. I said, you got to take ownership of what you did. And I said to her, I said, share with them that since you were a teenager, you were depressed off and on, that you used alcohol and boyfriends to numb your pain. And then once I got married to your father, I got more and more depressed and I felt worse and worse and worse. And I felt like a baby would help. So we got pregnant and it did help temporarily. And then it felt worse. So then I wanted to have another one. So then guess, guess what? I got more and more depressed over time when the second baby came. And I laid in bed and I watched you raise your little sister And I was so grateful because I couldn't get out of bed, but I also see now what I didn't see then, which is how dysfunctional and wrong it was. And I am so sorry, but in the moment, it was the best that I can do. I was depressed. I was sick and I could not get out of it. If the truth were told, your father was probably in denial as well and how you were raised or how I did not raise you, I should say, is not okay. And children should not become parents. And I put that on you. So Marta went and shared that with her girls. This is, we went back and forth about the dialogue and it's pretty simple. You're just owning your part. And without all these excuses and all this crap, it's like, just own it. It's part of your story. Your story's not wrong or bad. It just is. And if it affected other people, it's your job to own it. And then the next part, number two, of course, is, excuse me, number three, is to take responsibility and then apologize for it. You've got to apologize. And not, I'm sorry that happened to you. That's not an, that's a backward apology. An apology is, I'm really sorry, period. I'm really sorry for what I did to you, period. I'm really sorry for the type of mom I was. Period. Not, I'm sorry you feel that way. Okay. That's not an apology. I'm sorry is like a heartfelt, really sorry. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I was not a good parent to either of you. And I'm so sorry for that. No excuses. Not, you don't say this. I'm so sorry. But you know, your father traveled all week and it was really hard for me. And he should have noticed because I was depressed and he was also in denial. No, no, no. If you're trying to repair a relationship, uh uh-uh, that's you starting out in your adult and then swinging right into that adolescent chair with then blame for the husband and excuses from the adolescent chair. Uh -uh, uh Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. If you really want to repair a relationship, you got to own it and then you got to apologize from your heart. The next step is what I call the mend or the proposal. So again, I'm, I'm referring to, to Marta, but you can use this with anybody. So I had her say, you know, I'm healthier now. I can't go back in time, which is again, remember, speak in fact and truth. And we want to speak with bullet points. You know, how I'm big on that little short sentences. I'm healthier now. I can't go back in time. I'd love to have a relationship with you now. Can we work on it? Would you be open to this? Boom, 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 boom. That's it. All these little statements. So then you ask, would you be open to this now? Would you be open to a, to a relationship with me now? And then you, the next step is you wait and you listen. Let there be silence and let the other person respond. Your kid, by the way, no matter what the age, may be willing or open right away and welcome you with open arms. Like, oh, I've been waiting for you to say this. Of course we can have a relationship. I love you and I've missed you all these years. Or they might be furious and angry with you. They might get up and walk away. Just remember this. They have years. They may have, I don't know what your circumstances, but they may have years of anger built up with you. And if they do, you have to say to yourself, this is okay. Let them, let them be angry. It's okay. 
Let them get it out. They've got pent up anger at you. It's okay. Now, I'm not saying they can throw things across the room at you and yell and scream and swear for hours and days and months on end. But if they're angry, let them get it out. And just sit there and go, but don't let it land on you. Don't let it hit your heart. Let it go by you and say, you know what? It's no different than a tea kettle blowing off steam. They need to blow off steam. And they got to get that out of the way so then they can connect with you in their heart. Let them get the anger out. Stay present and know that this is old emotion. You got to You got to remind yourself of this. We, what we want to do in relationships like this is clean the slate. So do not defend yourself. Do not say, yeah, but when we go to yeah, but we're back in the adolescent chair defending. Your father this and your father should have done that. No, 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 no. Even if their accusations are not 100% accurate, who cares? If your goal is to build a relationship with your child or whoever this person is that you're trying to build a relationship with, just let it go. You've got to become masterful at letting go of the small stuff. Remember, there's great power in just listening. People want to be heard. Be what I call a masterful listener. Listening does not mean having a rebuttal ready or formulating when you are, when they're speaking to you. For, you've got to be present. It's about listening and being present and saying, thank you so much. I hear you at the end. That's it. I hear that you're angry with me. I get it. Thanks for sharing. Period. Period then that person can settle into their body and their heart again and go, okay, now what? Now what? So when they're done, here's the next step. What's the plan? And remember to take it slow. So depending on how your child reacts or responds to you, take it slow. You are the adult becoming healthy. So you got to let this new relationship evolve. And it may not be in the moment that they're going to be able to come around. They may leave the meeting that you have with them and be like, I'm so angry at my mom, my dad, blah, 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 blah. But then after a couple of days, it dawns on them. Wow. You know, my mom really did take responsibility. That was kind of crazy. Or they'll be sharing with a friend what happened. And their friend might say, wow, your mom apologized. That's awesome. My mom would never apologize. And then that'll get your kid thinking, well, dang, I didn't even think about that. That's a big deal. My mom did apologize. Huh. So let it, let it simmer, you know, with your, within your kid. It's got to marinate a little bit what happened. It's okay if it doesn't happen immediately because from our adult chair, we're able to wait and we're patient. Everything happens in divine time. Let it evolve and happen as it is supposed to. It's not on your timeline it's on divine time. So just let it happen. It's going to marinate. Your kid's going to marinate. Things are going to shift and change. Give it time. Okay. So when you're chatting with them at some point, whether it be in the future or at the same meeting, we want to come up with a plan. We want to take it slow and say, okay. And you're asking your your child, Hey, you know, what would be good for you? What's the plan? Can we have dinner once a week? Can we have a phone call once a week or every day or every other day? What would be comfortable for you? So the way to build any relationship is to inquire about what each person wants and more importantly, feel comfortable with. We want to make sure both parties feel comfortable. And remember, everything is temporary. So if your kid says something like, yeah, we can have one phone, phone call a month. It's like, okay, then you would better show up on your best behavior once a month, ready to have that phone call. And you're going to be on your best behavior. And then guess what? Your kid might say, okay, I guess I can do it again. You know, we can do it again. Again, this is all different depending on what age child you're talking to or with. If you have a child that's still in the home, you obviously see them all the time. This is different. So in Marta's case, she had one kid that was at college. She had one that was 14. So with her 14 year old, I said, hey, you're 20 year olds away. So let's, let's come up with how often she wants to talk to you on the phone and visit you at college. Cause she was only a couple hours away. I said, but your 14 year old, let's ask her what she needs and would be comfortable with. Would she like you, you, the both of you to have dinner 
five times a week? Would she like the two of you to go out to dinner, get your nails done together, go for walks every day after dinner? What's comfortable for her as you're building this new relationship? What would she like? We don't assume we know what the other person wants or needs. We never assume. We want to ask them. I don't know what's going on with someone else. You got to ask them, inquire. What would you like? What do you need? What feels comfortable? Okay. You know, I've worked with so many people over the years and there have been definitely people that have said to me, whether it be kids, young adults, older adults, it doesn't matter. I never want to see so-and-so again, ever. And if so-and-so continues to show up in a healthy way, there's a very, very, very good chance that you will, that your mind is changed about that person and you might want to see them again. Does that make sense? So in Marta's case, if her daughter had said, her 20 year old daughter, I never, ever, ever want to see you again. If Marta continues to show up healthy and maybe send a letter every few months, just checking in, just want you to know, I love you. And again, I'm so sorry. Something simple and mail a letter or a card or send an email where there's no blame, no reaction, but just a reach, some sort of reaching out, then experience trumps words. Meaning you're giving your child or that other person an experience of how different you are because you're showing up in such a healthy way. So you can, I can say to you, Hey, I'm so healthy. Look how I'm showing up. I'm going to, sh- I, I show up healthy now for people. I don't react anymore. Yeah, we'll see about that. But when I show up with you and I continue to reach out and I'm really healthy, there's an experience that you're having of me. Or if someone shows up and says, oh, you know what? I am not comfortable with you, but I'll meet with you once a month at Starbucks. Okay. Every time you show up at Starbucks and you're healthy, your child or that other person is going to say, wow, they really are different. They're having an experience of you. Words mean nothing. It's all about experience. I know this is true also. Sometimes kids are skewed by the other parent. This is a little bit of a side note, especially in the cases of divorce. I really see how angry, how the angered parent throws the other parent under the bus and speaks lies about, I I deal with this. I have dealt with this for years. makes me so upset. It's so hard on the parent that's healthy, that has done nothing wrong. I've worked with Unfortunately, many women that have been married to narcissists and very abusive narcissists, whether it be physically or verbally, and just very twisted thinking, lots of gas, gaslighting, and the, and you know, and, and they show up as wonder dad for the kids and uh, throw the mother under the bus. You know what? That's awful. And if you're someone that's listening to this right now and you are bashing your spouse or your partner in front of your kids, please stop immediately. Kids don't want to hear that their parent, the other parent is that way. It's really hard for kids when parents hate each other. It's not the kid's fault, by the way. Remember that. If you can't get along with your ex, do it for the sake of your child. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with this person, but can you be respectful? I've talked to so many people over the years that they've got to have two weddings because the parents can't be in the same room and they can't have two, gra- they have to have two graduation parties because the parents can't show up together. It's like, really? Just show up. Do it for the sake. I, you got to put the kids first. Do it for the kid. Because I work, I don't work a lot with kids, but the kids that I have worked with, and I've actually talked to a lot of my, um, my son's friends. And they've shared with me a lot of these kids like, oh, my parents hate each other. It's really, you know what the kids all say unanimously? It's really hard on me when because my parents don't do not get along at all. Man, my mom hates my dad. Man, my dad really hates my mom. Stop doing that to your kids, you guys, please. It's not healthy for them. It, and I, I know some of my son's friends, like they have major anxiety because of it because they're trying to please both parents. Codependency right there is being born. So do it for the sake of your kids. If, you, if, if you've only got to see your ex like once a year for like a wedding or something, just suck it up and do it. Be the adult. Now, again, if there's abuse, you know I throw that out the window immediately. You're never to be with someone that is abusive toward you. Okay, back to this. 
Number seven, accept what is and keep living your life. So again, I wish people, when people ask me such questions, like how do I do this or how do I change someone's behavior? You can't, but I, and I wish I had that magic pill to turn everything around hundred percent, but I don't, but there's great power in acceptance of what is. Acceptance is powerful. Okay. So if you've got a kid or a person in your life that doesn't want to talk to you right now, accept it. I didn't say you had to like it. Didn't say you had to love it. Didn't say to continue to try to get them to, to, to change their opinion about you every single day, but accept where things are for today. Just right now in this moment, I accept it. So-and-so is not talking to me. So-and-so does not want me in their life. Okay. Okay. I'm going to accept it because until you accept it, it cannot change. Until you accept where things are in this moment, things can't change because if you're not accepting where things are, you are in resistance of it, of truth that's right in front of your face. So I ask you with total love to accept what is, and it might be painful, but you got to accept it. Like, I'm not happy about the fact that my child won't talk to me or my home ever won't talk to me. It hurts me. I'm in grief. Okay. Okay. You got to keep going because things change all the time and keep working on being the best you that you can be. But keep going on for you after you accept. Okay. Here's the last step. Forgiveness of self. Oftentimes when I suggest this to people, they say they can't because they were so bad. And if things were only different, then their kids would be different, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the thing. We blame ourselves with the person we are today, the brain we have today, all the new awarenesses and the wisdom we have today. We blame the younger version of ourselves. So in the case of Marta, Marta was like in her early 20s when she had her first daughter with depression and all this going on, her logic was, let me have a baby. That'll take me out of my depression. That was the best thought that she had in that moment. Now I ask her as like, I don't remember. I think she was like 45. And I said, okay, so what would you say to someone today at the age of 45? Would you suggest for anybody to have a baby if they are depressed to help them out of their depression. She says, heck no, that's the dumbest idea. And I did that. And I said, no, 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 you're judging it as a dumb idea now, but go back into your 25 year old body. I want you to step into that right now for a moment. How did it feel then? And I actually had her slide back in time and step into 25 year old self. She goes, oh, well then it seemed like the most brilliant idea ever. I said, there you go. So you, it's not fair to us to judge who we are today based on the younger brain and the younger awarenesses and the younger wisdom that you didn't have then. You didn't have it. You really did the best that you could. So that's why forgiveness is so powerful. Forgive that younger version of you. I remember I worked with a guy, gosh, it was a few years ago, who was an alcoholic and he drank a lot and he had so much blame and shame around who he was. He could not believe the choices he had made all these years ago. And I had invited him to forgive himself. He was not an alcoholic now, but he was while he was raising his children and his wife and or not raise his wife, but his wife was there and he had children. And he said, I treated them so poorly. It was awful. I was drunk all the time. I treated them badly. I just, how, and he said to me, Michelle, how can you ask me to forgive myself? He goes, I was a bad guy. I was so bad. And he said, if I forgive myself, he goes, I'm just, that's going to let me off the hook. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, if I'd come up to you 10 years ago while you were in the middle of your dysfunctional life and suggested that you get your stuff together and stop working so much, stop drinking so much. I said, what would you have said to me? He says, I would have ignored you. He said, my wife asked, asked me to, to do the same thing. And I said, forget it. I'm not going to do it. And I said, well, did you love your wife? And he says, of course I did. Why would you ask that? I said, then why didn't you stop? He said, because I was a sick guy. He says, I had demons and issues from my own childhood that I didn't know how to work out. 
And he says, it wasn't until he went to counseling in AA that he learned tools to help him heal his own past and get healthy. I said, so you can't forgive the younger you that was doing what he could to get by on a daily basis. Is that what you're saying? And uh, I said, remember, that guy was in so much pain. He didn't know what to do about it, though. So the only thing he could do was drink and work because he was a workaholic, too. I said, the younger version of you that was trying to get it right, but didn't know how, because his parents didn't teach him how to do it because his dad was an alcoholic, too. I said, this is like not forgiving that kid, right? That younger version that failed a calculus test. But he'd never taken calculus. He had taken, let's say, trig or some other math. But he was given a calculus test and failed it. And he's beating up on himself, even though he'd never learned it. He'd never been through it. I said, you didn't have the knowledge or the tools, yet you sit here and judge yourself and won't forgive yourself, more specifically, the younger version of you. He says, well, when you put it that way, maybe I can forgive myself. I said, great. I said, I want you to go through the steps that we just went through. I said, I want you to go through these steps with your kids and your wife, these eight steps I just gave all you guys. And I said, go through these steps and I want you to come back and tell me how it goes. He loved the idea and he did decide ultimately to forgive himself and it changed his life. He went through every single step I just gave you and he changed his relationship with his wife and it changed his relationship with his kids completely. He accepted all of it and then forgave himself. That was the last step. Forgiveness allows us to get unstuck and to move on for ourselves. It's freedom. So the question is, is where do you want to focus? You can focus on the past, on the unhealthy or the unhealed part of us, or on the present part of us that is striving to get healed, to get healthy. You've got to, number one, accept where you are today, accept the past, and then forgive and allow yourself to focus on just today. Because when you stay with just today in the present moment, this is where all things can change, including, and most importantly, your perspective of yourself. There you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, these are some really powerful steps. They're simple steps. You know, I love that. That's all about the the adult chair is all about simple steps for healing. But they're simple steps and it takes a lot of courage to go ahead and, and really apply these steps into your life and change the relationships that you're having with other people. So I wish you all the best. I know you can do it. If you're listening to this podcast, I know you can do it. You've got this. And I'm with you 100% of the way. Love you guys. Have a great week. I'll see you seated right here next week in the adult chair.